hear about Jalen Jones, uh, but where do you go from there? How do you feel about your depth? Who steps in for him? What's your rotation look like? All those questions. Well, I'm, I'm going to be clear, man. That's a, that's a tremendous loss for us in, uh, in more ways than one. I mean, uh, you know, he, he was a tremendous asset, you know, just in terms of his leadership. I mean, uh, really, really strong uh, football intelligence. Uh, he's really very confident, and, and as a coordinator, he gives you confidence to go in man-to-man -man coverage uh, because he can constantly say, hey, coach, I'm ready, man. Let's, let's go lock him down. And uh, then his skill set. I mean, you know, I tell him all the time, I say, man, you're a pro. You possess a skill set that you can certainly play at a high level. Uh, so we'll miss him uh, not only on the field, uh, but in the locker room. And the last thing, he provided a lot of versatility. Uh, as you know, he could go inside and play safety. Uh, you know, did a great job at corner, and then also in the, in the, in the kicking game. Uh, so uh, how do you replace him? Uh, well, you know, Ken Wester came in at the end of the game off of an injury, and uh, he played well, he played exceptionally well. Uh, we got uh, Javion Hamilton uh, at the corner, and uh, now the freshman's really going to step up. Key drama is going to really step up. And Miles, who's probably our most flexible guy right now, Miles Hosford, those guys have to step up on the edge. And, uh, and we, we got to just uh, uh, pick up where he left off at, and it's painful. Uh, but I know he expects us to, to go on. Judas. Jalen Judas. Jalen, yeah, J Jalen Judas has been a. Man, he played well. What, a, what an ultimate surprise. You're talking about watching a kid mature. I mean, it's, it's amazing uh, how much more he's matured from last year. And uh, just his level of focus and uh, his commitment. And, of course, you can see his, his play speed. And it's just a blessing to see young men do that. And uh, we, we're, we're proud of him for doing that. And we're fortunate to have him uh, on this football team. Coach, uh I think at halftime we can't, you'd already substituted 20 or 22 guys on defense. We'll talk about that, but also we'll talk about Montreal Custis and what kind of game he had. Well, if you look at the current trend right now in college football, you're going to play uh, 100 or maybe north of 100 snaps. And uh, the one thing that we're constantly talking about on defense is uh, let's make sure that we go into the fourth quarter fresh. And uh, let's make sure uh, we, we play the guys that's, that's on the roster and, and not be afraid to put a young guy in uh, because of the mistake that he may make. Uh, because when, when you get to the red zone, you get the two minute, you get the fourth quarter, that's the point of the game. You really want your first line guys in and you want them fresh. And so with the trend of college football now, uh, the tempo offenses uh, going into a game and coming up playing north of 100 snaps, I think it's important uh, for us to play multiple guys. I think it's important that you go into a game and uh, you, you have uh, two star units. And so you'll see a lot of that, you know, and I encourage the, the coaches to, you know, don't be afraid to play those guys. You know, let's play them. We'll, we'll coach them up during the week. We'll train them during the week. But on game day, you know, let them play. And the Montreal Custis, I mean, I look at him, man, in the same light as, uh, as uh, Jalen Jews. They matured a lot. It's a difference. It's a big difference that a year makes in a young man. And I also think when you, when a young man knows that you value him and, uh, well, you know, we emphasize it, uh, you know, in training camp, and uh, Coach Luke did a tremendous job of uh, uh, videoing the situation that we'll face, the rule changes, uh, the emphasis our officials going to uh, be searching for this year. Uh, so we went to training camp, we paid attention to it, and had a lot of time on task then. But when it happened in the game, when we saw uh, Texas Tech lose a, a player because of it, immediately our sideline began to talk about it, you know, and, and uh, we, you know, we talked about the target and the strike zone, make sure we not only uh, hitting the receivers and spreading the right strikes on, but also the quarterbacks, uh, because it's, it's, it's part of the environment, it's part of the coach now, they're searching for it. And if it's close, uh, not only are you going to penalize, but you can lose a kid in the ball game. So we're definitely going to coach it up every day. Uh, it's going to be on the agenda to talk about daily, and we're going to make sure that these guys understand that it's a certain strike on the target area uh, that you have to make your tackles in now. And uh, sometimes it's difficult because the offensive guy, uh, he'll bend down, but uh, we can't allow them to make that as an excuse. We have to do it the right way. So you're certainly right. We're definitely paying more emphasis to it. Coach, uh, Cliff Kingsbury said after the game that you changed coverages and fronts a lot and kept them a little bit off balance and that he thought that was a key in the game. Is that a benefit of being second year in the program and is that something you couldn't do last year as much when you were calling the game? 
Well, it's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely benefit Chuck in uh, year number two because now you can put more on your players' play. And now they're able to now. Uh, Tech, they, they does a wonderful job of uh, getting lined up with speed and then looking at and diagnosing what you're in the defense and then going to a play, uh, they get positive yardage on them. And uh, if the defense doesn't do the same thing, we call it look, look. Once they look, we have to look. And if you don't do, do that, then they're probably going to get a positive play on you. But, uh, but our guys did a tremendous job of uh, resetting their cleats, communicating and adjusting, and it's definitely a benefit uh, a year two. Uh, we did some last year, but you have half of the defense running one coverage, the other half running another one. So uh, it, was, it was really good to see the guys get on the same page. And uh, the communication was really key. And uh, we, we came in on Sunday and, and uh, kind of joked to him about the guys doing, using sign language. And I always tell one guy, Chuck, when you get a signal, co sign off on him. You know, and it was, it was nice to see. And uh, when you see those things, you have to come into your meeting room and you have to make it a big deal. Because if not, if you don't emphasize it, you won't get it on the grass. Tell you, you know, it was surprising to see him play, play as well as he did. And one thing we talked about with Tisdale is uh, increasing his snaps. You know, and uh, uh, he's a big kid that can run very well. Uh, doesn't say two words. I mean, he's strong in the classroom in terms of you know, knowing his assignment. He doesn't offer a lot of mental mistakes. And, and uh, he plays hard. And uh, he gave us a tremendous shot in the arm and allowed us to play at a high level at certain times. Not trying to hog this thing, we got to ask you about the linebackers. Uh, just evaluate both positions, if you would, and where you go without Cavante if he's not eligible. Well, right now we're, we're game planning. Of course, and Monday's a big game plan day for us, and we'll get together this afternoon and tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll talk personnel. Uh, but, but if we're not able to have uh, Rugs in the lineup, and we'll look at moving uh, Momo over to money backer, uh, number forty-six. Uh, you know, who, who's real strong in terms of going to defense, very knowledgeable. And uh, it was good to see him play well. And uh, then we'll go probably at, at the mic position. Uh, we'll probably go with Bean Dukes, move him up the mic position. And, uh, and we'll start, start at that point. Questions? Uh, what has Bean Dukes done to make you feel confident in sliding this I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What has Well, I'll tell you the biggest thing that the young man has done is that, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when, when he was moved down to depth chart, his attitude didn't change one bit. I mean, he had a phenomenal attitude. I call it a championship attitude. I mean, he stayed on task. Uh, he came into the meeting room and he took notes as if he was, you know, still with the ones. And you can see the, the coaching from the sideline, the leadership. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a lot of times when guys arose yeah. being reduced, uh, yeah. they tend to pop. And you can see it visibly. But, uh, I mean, that young man continued to work. And I believe it was Tuesday when we came in and go somewhere on the other side. Let's give, let's give him some more snaps. And, uh, you know, because at some point he's going to have to help us. But he has done a tremendous job himself of staying locked in and staying positive. And uh, he played great in the game on Saturday, which also gave us a lot of encouragement to plug him in and, and let's go. Coach, what did the salute he's run and what do you expect from him? Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. They're going to run the ball. If that don't work, they're going to run it again. If that don't work, they're going to run it again. <laughs> they did a tremendous job against Murray State running the ball. And uh, I was in the study uh, last night and uh, this morning. And the first thing I look at is, you know, I take the stat sheet and I want to see the run pass comparison. They do a tremendous job of running the ball. They have two running backs. That's a nice one two punch. You know, you have one kid that's a scat back and he can make you miss. He can get skinny, get in gaps, increase you. Uh, another a running back that's a move to change type kid, a big kid can earn the hard yards. And uh, so they're going to run the ball. Uh, they're going to run the ball. And they'll use a quick game because uh, they like getting a lot of bunch formations, reduce the formation down, uh, get the ball out quick, which is a portion of their running game. And uh, so we expect them to come in and run the power, you know, run a lot of zone plays and uh, just keep the ball on the ground and, uh, and, and challenge our defense. And uh, we have to do a great job on defense of continuing to stop the run. It's going to be a good test for us on Saturday uh, to see if we're going to be disciplined, if we're going to be sound, if we're going to be physical versus the run game. Coach, when you go with Dean Dukes there in the middle, 
Now, obviously, if you lose a little bit of speed from having Momo there, do you change your personnel at all on the defensive end or anywhere around him to compensate for that speed? Well, no. I mean, you uh, you know, one thing about uh, being Deuce is, uh, you know, he understands the defense. And, and a lot of times, uh, you know, when, when, when a young man is not playing up to speed, it's, it's not all physical. It's all he's processing, you know. So now that he understands, um, you know, the defense, he'll play faster. And uh, you put more confidence in it, and, uh, and uh, he'll play faster. But one thing we did talk about in, in line with what you're saying is that on third down, let's get some more faster guys on the field. And that ties into don't look at a guy's classification. You know, let's get more speed on the field, uh, and, and let's get to the quarterback. Uh, because one thing we're not satisfied with coming out of the last ball game, uh, as many times they threw the ball, uh, we didn't walk away with, with sacks and interceptions. So we certainly got to improve on that because uh, we're getting ready to go on the run now. If you don't get takeaways and uh, you don't pressure the quarterback and make the decision maker, it'll be hard for you to come out on top. So we definitely pay attention to that. Coach, after a big win now, how's it feel just to finally get back here at home and play in front of the Ole Miss fans? Well, I tell you, it's really, really good to get a win, you know, especially on the road. Uh, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, the training camp, uh, the training camp, one of the best I've been around. Uh, I think uh, Coach Luke and uh, the entire support staff at Ole Miss did a wonderful job at training camp, and uh, it was going so smooth that you ready to get to a ball game. And to go win a game on the road, man, was outstanding. It was outstanding for our fans, outstanding for the players. And now to have an opportunity to come back home, uh, you get an opportunity to, to sleep in your own bed and play in front of your own crowd. I mean, it's, it's going to be great. It'd be great to have the fan support behind us, and I'm sure the players are really excited about being home this week. Any more questions for Coach McGriff? All right. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you all. Y'all have a great day.